when I produce a record compared to some producers that I've worked with and before, not all of them, but I like to see the record from pre-production stage all the way to the record coming out. I like to be involved in the marketing aspects and the promotion aspect of the record and what's the first singles. I like to be involved in a pre-production. What's the cadence of the song? What's the lyrics? What's the hook? You know what I mean? What's the other songs in your record? How's this song going to complement the other records so it doesn't step on any other records' toes? You know what I mean? And um, just see the whole project out from beginning to end. I've never been a producer that just wants to throw beats and try to sell a beat, a beat, a beat to anybody. I've never, we, we, I wasn't in the game starting off like that. You know, when I came up in the game, it was about one producer producing his own act. Premier had Gangstar, Bomb Squad had Public Enemy, Said G had Ultra Magnetics. You know, Chris and Boogie Down Productions produced themselves, Tribe Called Quest produced themselves, and that, that's the school I came up in. When you got your group, you produced yourself. I wasn't in the standing on the corner with 30 other cats trying to sell a beat for a nickel, you know what I mean? Stepping on each other's toes, and I'm still not into that. And I've been lucky to make enough dough where I didn't have to go try to survive doing that game, because I had enough producers telling me they wish they built their own little world where they didn't have to sit on the fucking corner selling nickels and dimes with everybody else, you know what I mean? So, that's cool. A lot of cats has come up and making their names today doing that, and that's good for them, you know what I mean? But I didn't have to do that, and I refuse to even get into that, that, that part of the game. I like to own and control my own brands and, you know, my own groups, my own styles, because what happens is um, I'll be seeing checks for the next 30 years off the stuff I created, you know what I mean? I wanted to work with KRS-One, you know what I mean? I had a chance to work with KRS-One. I wanted to work with Q when I was younger. Got a chance to work with Cube. I wanted to work with Jizza from Wu-Tang. I worked with Jizza from Wu-Tang, you know what I mean? So. All the cats I really wanted to work with, Dr. Trey, Snoop, you know, I've got a chance to work with them and produce all of them. So, you know, now what, what I get off on is working with a new act, somebody and creating something out of nothing and watching the whole, seeing the whole experience, seeing the whole everything just grow from just ideas we have talking about into flourishing into a fruitful career. That's what I really get off on and enjoy doing at this time. Oh, a lot of A&Rs and labels are felonious. A lot of them are just college kids, you know, that know how to push the paper through. They look real good on paper, and so they're gonna get the jobs at a lot of these major labels. Um, but there's good cats out there that know the music, you know what I mean? Do they have vision for the next music? I don't know. Do they know what the copy that's out there that's hot right now? Yes. You know, are they gonna fucking understand what you're doing? Maybe, maybe not. You know, you heard the story of Heavy D couldn't get signed. Some people didn't want to sign Biggie and, you know, we couldn't, Cypress couldn't get signed at three or four labels at one time. So they don't always got the vision and the insight. My thing is any way you can get into the game, you know, and you think your talent's good enough to take you to the next level, cool. I mean, you might not get a million dollars. Cypress signed for 65,000, it's first record deal, but we knew our shit was so strong. Once we got into the game and people tasted it, that, that it was going to do its own thing from there, you know what I mean? So. I say just get into the game, you know what I mean? And if your music's dope, people let you know it's dope. Joe the Butcher, Chris Schwartz, I hooked up with them through an A&R guy who was my A&R guy at Geffen Records named Jeff Fenster, who's now at um, J Records, I believe. Jeff was dope, you know what I mean? Very instrumental in the early part of my career, helping me get on, introducing me to people. And I met them, they produced the 783 album Joe the Butcher did. I met Chris Schwartz, he was a... Um, he used to work records. He managed Schooly D and he used to work the Easy E records and stuff out of Philly. He had a studio for it. He had an office down there on West 4th Street. So I met them down there and um, hooked up with Joe. Played him this project I had called Cypress Hill Demos. And they liked it. They wanted to give us a single deal. We said, no, we ain't going to do it. They ended up coming back with an album deal for 65000 We did the deal, boom, boom. Just did the album. It was at around six months for the record to come out. We finished it in 90. And it came out July 91, that summer. This whole culture, as it's changed, from what I see, was an underground culture that despised, you couldn't do a Sprite commercial. You couldn't do, put R&B people on your records. You couldn't dress like another rapper, you was whack. You couldn't use the same beat or style as another MC or group, you was whack. You couldn't use nobody's slang words, you was whack. And everything it despised, it has became. It has become the popular culture of the world. It has infiltrated clothes, movies, fashion style, everything. And, um, you know, there was no hip hop, go buy your fucking hip hop clothes. It's the style you invented and you wore if you were in your neighborhood or wherever you was from. I mean, you wore your clothes a certain way and that's how it was. Now there's hip hop style and hip hop fashion and go to the fucking store in the corner and get your hip hop clothes. Whatever, whatever. If that's what it gotta be, that's what it gotta be. That's all good, but it wasn't always like that, believe that.
We invented this shit from nothing. I didn't even invent this shit, you know what I mean? But they invented this shit from nothing. Mashup Radio is an underground culture of music which was taking an uh, instrumental track from one song and an acapella track from another song and putting them together, a la the remix, whatever you want to call it. You know, a lot of cats is doing Bastard Pop where they taking the Britney Spears and Michael Jackson and mixing them. What we do in a mashup radio is we take them rock and hip hop and bringing them together to create brand new songs, brand new remixes, you know what I mean? And we bringing it from the underground and our goal here at mashup radio is to bring it from the underground, this culture, and bring it to the mainstream and make people aware of it, you know? They always trying to figure out urban stations, how to get their songs on rock stations and rock stations in certain markets are trying to figure out how to compete with the urban stations that's very successful and but they don't want to disturb their regular daily format. So a mashup radio, it doesn't disturb anything, you know. It's it's a way to combine the two worlds to make it one where it will fit in either or of the other world. You know what I mean? We'll take um, 50 Cent, mix it with a Rage Against the Machine, and it sounds like a song that could actually fit on the 50 Cent album. You know what I mean? We bring in all the energy of a straight hip hop show to it. We we get it over on rock radio. So, you know. The mashup culture isn't something we invented, we created, it's been around for a few years and um, we're just bringing it and making people aware of it and hopefully, you know, we can be the, the funnel for it to help a lot of these dope DJs around the world doing them and make people aware of them and help create stars out of some of these DJs sitting in their bedroom on their computers. Yeah, at this moment, I know Jay-Z and Lincoln Park did a, a DVD, mashup DVD, you know what I mean? I think it's called Collide or Collision Course or something like that and, you know, they just did a mashup record together. So. The whole culture is coming to the mainstream's awareness right now, and it's going to be a lot more. You know, I've always touched on the rock rap thing. To me, hip hop started with that, from Public Enemy and Run DMC and LL Cool J and all those early productions were hip hop influenced rock tracks. You know what I mean? And at some point, people got lost and, and forgot that hip hop was very influenced by rock in its early stages. Once it got into the funk and the jazz, people started doing rock again, and they thought it was some new shit, but. You know, like I said, Run DMC, Public Enemy, Beastie Boys, LA, all that was rock influenced hip hop. So growing up on that, hip hop and rocks always came hand in hand to me. So it's just, it's a natural thing. It's another evolution of the music, another branch on the hip hop tree.